What's up everyone? Derek here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to rebuild the front shocks on a Gen 1 Raptor. It's really a pretty simple job. It just requires some special tools. Um, the first thing you're going to do is put a mark on everything. Um, see, I, this is labeled my left shock. Um, then draw a line from this plate to your top hat. And then I drew one down to the spring as well. Kind of do the same thing on the bottom. Spring to the perch to the body. <clears throat> um, obviously my shocks are blown out. Um, the other one was a little worse than this, but it's got 65,000 miles on it now, so it's time for a rebuild anyway. <clears throat> Uh, you're supposed to do them every 50 if it's 100% on-road use. Hopefully you're doing a little more off-road, so you have to rebuild them every a little bit more than that. But To get started, the first thing we're going to do is compress our spring. I would highly recommend this spring compressor. It's made by SPC. Um, works really, really good. <clears throat> I feel pretty safe using it compared to the other clamp style that I've had in the past. And that one just kind of gave you the heebie jeebies whenever I used it. And this one compresses a lot better. It has a lot more strength to it. <clears throat> I'm also going to set my fronts at mid perch. <clears throat> so I'm going to compress the springs a little more than uh, I normally would, just to make it easier for when I put it back together. But once you get everything set up, I usually just throw a wrench on here and count how many times I do each side <clears throat> to make sure it compresses easily. After you get your spring compressed, the Top hat nut on the end of your shaft is a 17 millimeter. <clears throat> Just use a pry bar in between the studs to hold it in place. I think it was pretty corroded on there. So I put my eight millimeter wrench on the top of it, let it rest against the stud. Pry bar in between the studs to hold it, and then I backed it off with my wrench. <clears throat> Now that's free. Your top hat should come off. You see all that mud in there? I'm gonna get all that out of there. Um, after you get it off, just double check your top hat bushing here. Make sure it's not cracked or broken. If it is, get a new one. Then we'll pull the spring off. Bump stop. And there's a little plastic cover that 
we'll take off as well. Another way you know these shocks are bad, besides the obvious leaking it's doing, is you're not supposed to push those shafts down. You not be able to, shouldn't be able to do it by hand. <clears throat> um, these are charged with nitrogen. That nitrogen should keep that shaft up. So, low on nitrogen, leaking like crazy. It's definitely time. We're gonna pop our lower perch bushing off as well. Same thing with this, check it for cracks, see if it's broken. If it is, replace it. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up so we can start ripping it apart. All right, guys, got it pretty well cleaned up. Um, I'll clean up a little more after I get it tore apart. But next thing we're going to do is there's a little plastic plug in this hole. We're going to stick a pick in there. And just kind of top it out. There it is. So the way Fox sets these up, there's a little rubber piece on the other side of this Allen screw. It's like a self-healing rubber bullet. Um, to charge your shocks, you would use a special safety needle, needle tool. Uh, stab it in there, pump it up to your pressure, put your needle out, it shouldn't leak. <clears throat> if you're gonna stick with this style, I would make sure you get new rubber pellets um, and just replace them while you're in here. That way you don't have to worry about them leaking. I'm actually going to be replacing it with a Schrader valve so I can check it a lot easier. So in order to pull the nitrogen out, I'm just going to use a syringe needle here. <clears throat> just going to push it into that hole. Let the nitrogen drain out of it. After that's all done, you use a, I believe it's a 3 wrench or Allen wrench and pull that screw out of the way. Next thing you have to do is there's two little holes on top of your cap here. Mine are filled with junk. Um, but these are the bleed screws for the shock. Go ahead and clean them out and break them loose. I believe it's a two millimeter Allen wrench. Um, clean these holes out too. That's what we're going to stick our spanner wrench into to get the top cap off. You want to make sure at least one of these can come loose so you can bleed your shock out. If it doesn't, you'll probably have to replace this cap. Oh, well, this one came loose, this one did not, so I'll probably look at replacing that cap next time I rebuild these. But one breaking loose is all we really need. <clears throat> now 
nitrogen is all drained out. So I'm pull that lower plug out and the rubber. <clears throat> All right, next we're gonna spin our top cap off. Um, just need a spanner wrench. I bought this from Schmitty Racing Suspensions, I believe it's called. Uh, I got most of my tools from them. But the little pins just go into the cap. Give it a couple taps. <clears throat> Those things are on there pretty tight, so just get a motivator, big bar for it. Once it breaks loose, spin it up the rest of the way by hand. Top cap slid off right there. I'll set that off to the side. This happened in the last one too. The shaft is stained with the reservoir. shaft and then take and dump all the oil out of it um, usually this two part stays in the shaft body when you pull your shaft out so when you tip it over to get the fluid out of it make sure you catch it see in there that little piece there is supposed to come out with the, with the reservoir tube but it didn't so I'm gonna have to try to get that out all right I got it out this is the little piece I was talking about that stayed down there I just took the tube pushed it back down inside and was able to pull it out but it just just an o-ring that seals on it and there you go next thing we're going to do is get that piston out of there <clears throat> first thing we do is push down on it it's kind of hard to see it but on the other side of that blue ring is a little snap ring you can see the open end on the left there <clears throat> um, we're just going to use a little screwdriver to push it down and then and then we'll uh, just pull it out and then we'll be able to get that piston out of there.
There you can see that snap ring. I just spun it up. And then you Mechanical fingers would work really good for this, but mine are broken, so I just took a piece of utility wire, made a hook out of it, pull it up. No. And there's what it looks like. Next thing we need to do is get that piston out of there. To do that, just use a rubber tipped air nozzle. Turn your compressor down to like 40, 50 PSI. You're gonna put it right in this hole where you fill nitrogen at and give it a couple boops and she'll pop right out of there. Uh, I put a towel underneath of it and make sure there's nothing under there so you don't nick it. After that, pull your body out. And it's all torn apart. There's your internal floating piston. I don't know if that just popped off or if it was off inside there. <clears throat> but as you see, I take all my parts, set them on this cookie sheet. Uh, don't worry, I won't use a cookie sheet to make cookies. <laughs> it's an old one. Um, next thing I'm going to do is clean everything up really good. I'm going to set the body to mid perch and then we'll replace all of our seals. All right, so we set these at mid-perch. Uh, first thing you gotta do is, there's a little set screw that's in that hole. It's like a 3 32nd head on it, I believe. But pull that out, and then you're gonna tap on your perch until it gets past that groove there. I need to whack on mine pretty good. Stupid Midwest corrosion. I know I complain about it a lot, but it's really frustrating. <clears throat> then all I have to do is just use a little screwdriver. Get this snap ring out of the bottom groove. slide it up make sure it clicks in all the way on that mid groove I believe there's one more above that but I'm only going to mid perch all right guys now we're gonna replace our seals uh, it's really pretty simple you got o-ring just get under it with a pick pull it out key here is organization. Um, you don't want to get the wrong O-ring where you, where you need it. It will cause leaks and stuff won't work correctly. So the part I took it off of and then the O-ring will go there and then I'll take my new O-rings and match them all up. So then this is a wear band that just kind of pulls apart and comes right off. There's another wear band here. With a small o-ring underneath it. And then on your top cap, you've got a big O-ring on the outside.
an o-ring on the inside here and then there's three in the middle here um, there's this top one and these are a little trickier to get out but they're even worse to put it back in top one and then there's one right here that's our middle one and then our bottom one on this truck was actually two pieces But it's getting replaced with a one piece seal. There's part of it. And the other part. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean everything up. Just spray it off with some degreaser, wipe it down, get the rest of this crud off of it. And with the, if you're gonna switch your perch to the middle or the top, um, you don't have to put that set screw back in. That's just there to keep it from spinning, but it's under enough pressure. I don't think it's gonna spin on you. Um, I decided not to take this apart on this one. Um, it's your shims and it's kind of what controls everything. And if you get it out of order, it'll really screw stuff up. Um, so I'm just gonna blow it out and put my rings back on there. Now that we got everything clean, I'm just gonna go ahead and match up my O-rings. And then set the old one off to the side. Uh, there's a Schrader valve I'm going to put in. I didn't use this on either shock, but it come with the kit. Uh, the kit is from Forged Off-Road. They're the ones that make these Schrader valves. They're a special made valve that have a little O-ring on them. Thread right into that hole. There are some kits where you tap the hole out. Uh, that's completely fine. Then you just put some pipe sealant on it. Uh -uh. And then our three seals for the inside of the cap. I said this white one replaces these two 
and then these are the same that's your middle seal and your top seal <clears throat> we're gonna do these ones first uh, I don't know if you can tell that little ridge inside there that's gonna face down inside your top cap and then on these that tapered part that's going to face up on both of them we're going to start with the bottom one work our way up these things are a pain use a little bit of new oil you always want to lube up oil rings before you put them in it just keeps them from getting caught and um, nicked or scratched really doesn't take much to make an o-ring leak but as you see I'm just kind of working it into that bottom groove there if you're going to use something to push on it make sure it's very blunt again you don't want to cut your o-rings up So there, it kind of got it in. Just work it in the rest of the way. There are the bottom ones in. They are not all the same. Or the middle two, or the, sorry. The middle one and the top one are not the same. The one is slightly skinnier than the other you can see that so this one's just a smidge skinnier this is your very top one which means this one goes in the middle So I'm going to get these in and move on to the next step. Okay, guys, I got all those inner seals in, finally. Move on to the rest of them. Small O-ring. Again, just dip it in some oil. Bring your fingers along it. Press it in. Our outer. shaft o-rings or sorry o-ring and wear band wear band just pops on there pretty simple bottom of our piston And in order to get this in with that wear band, So you can tell this one's not round, it's kind of straight. You're going to uh, flip your tube upside down, these holes go to the top. Press this in just a little bit. Wrap this around it. And just kind of hold it in place. 
tap it down. That'll hold that in. When we're ready to put our piston in, we'll just put this in the shock, smack it down real good, and that'll be seated. So next we're gonna put this onto our shaft. Lube up the shaft a little bit. Lube up these seals a little bit. I bought this shaft bullet. Just goes on there like that. You're gonna take your top cap. Force it down as far as you can. And then we're gonna take it over to the vise. Set our cap on top of it like that. And then on the end of this nut here, just give it a little tap. There we go. So once you get it on, just kind of make sure it slides freely. And I'll tell you that the none of your O-rings got bent over or pushed or anything like that. All right, now we put it all back together. Um, I'm just gonna kind of wipe stuff down as I put it in. But the first thing we're gonna do is get our internal floating piston in there. You just kind of carefully put your tube down inside. Take a wooden dowel. Um, this is just a plunder handle. Cheaper than a wooden dowel for some reason. Kind of get it lined up and just give it a good smack. It'll go in. Go ahead and press that piston all the way down. I don't know if you heard that air coming out of there, but that means that seal's really good. Next, we're going to take our O ring, or sorry, our snap ring. Just drop it in there. Flathead very carefully. Push it onto the bottom side of that blue ring where it sat under before. Once you get it down inside there, give it your compressor at a low pressure. Just uh, pull a little bit of air in the bottom of it. That'll pop that snap ring into place. All right. So after you get it in all the way, just go ahead and press that piston back down a little bit. Next thing we do is put the spacer on the bottom of this. Again, holes go up. Carefully set that down inside. Make sure you get that spacer on there. I forgot it, so I had to take the cap back off and put it back on. <clears throat> Next, we're going to fill it up with some fluid, um, shock oil. I'm using Lucas Racing. Seven and a half weight is what was recommended for me. Bought this from Schmitty Racing Suspensions. You can get Fox Oil. I'm not sure if there's any other brands, but the fronts do about 550 milliliters.
fill it up. Just trying to get the oil to around the top of that tube, that floating tube, not the shock body. Take your cap, put it just a little bit from the bottom there. Slowly set it in. The oil comes out. Press down and turn it. And I left that bleed screw open. Get it on there all the way, give it a good ugga dugga. So now if you're sticking with the same kind of pellet style for the nitrogen, um, you would put the pellet in, put your Allen back in, and then get ready to fill it with some nitrogen. But like I said, I'm switching to a Schrader valve. And if you get one of these as well, just take the cap off. And thread it in. This is pretty soft aluminum. The Schrader valve is a hard steel. So be careful you don't cross thread it in there. And it's just a 7 16 wrench. Go ahead and tighten it down. Leader screw is still open. Now we'll get ready to fill it. Um, I bought the hose and regulator from Schmidt Racing Suspensions as well. Uh, would definitely recommend them. They're great to work for. I had a question about my or not work for, sorry, work with. I had a question about my order and they answered super quick. I got the no loss chuck with it. About 200 PSI or so is all you need. Open up your tank. And then I slowly open the valve up. There we go. Just kind of let it hold pressure for a little bit. All the air bubbles and oil comes out of that. You don't want all the oil out of it, just the bubbles, the air bubbles. Go ahead and tighten your screw up. Again, if you have both of them loose, tighten them both up.
Turn your valve off up here if you get the no loss chuck. Turn your tank off. Unscrew the trigger valve. And if you kept with the rubber pellet in there, the procedure would be the same. You would just be stabbing the pellet instead of twisting on the fitting of the trigger valve. So really no difference there. Put our cap back on. And there you go. Fully rebuilt shock. So to finish up, we just got to put our spring back on. Clean everything up a little bit. Lower bushing. This dust cap. Bump stop. And then the spring. This is where those marks we made are important. You can see my lower perch is still lined up with my shock body, my bushing, my spring. Draw our tap cap on, the mark we made. Want it to line up with the spring. And it does. Press these down a little more. So we moved it to a mid perch. So the spring will be a little more preloaded. Which will give it hopefully a couple inches of height. I'm not expecting it to be completely level, but close to it. And I just go down until I'm not noticing any new threads showing up at the top of the cap. It's cold in Iowa today and my heater just died. Hurry up and get this done. Get the tank refilled. Put your nut on there. Everything's lined up. Crank her down and then loosen up your compressors and you're all done. Well, there you go, everybody. That's how you rebuild the front struts on a Gen 1 Raptor box two and a half inch shock body um, really not too hard take your time be patient with those seals on the cap make sure you don't leave any parts behind uh, honestly the hardest part is gathering all the tools um, other than you know your basic hand tools you got the spring compressor, the spanner wrench, the nitrogen tank, and your fill hose, uh, your nitrogen hoses and regulator. Said I bought the rebuild kits from Forged Off Road, and it came with those Schrader valves. You could get them directly from Fox. The rebuild kits. Uh, there's other people that sell them as well. <clears throat> So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. 
you have any advice, definitely give me that. If I'm calling stuff by the wrong name, please tell me. I don't want to be out here giving out incorrect information. Um, but hopefully you guys like this. Hopefully it was informative and it makes you a little less scared to tackle the job. I said it really wasn't too bad to do. So Again, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, see more fun stuff coming up. Um, I got one more, well, I got to rebuild the rear shocks, I've got one more maintenance thing to do, and then it's on to the fun stuff. So, hopefully you guys take a minute out of your day to do some maintenance. Thanks for watching.